Hello everybody, my name is Jad, welcome to another MLB 9 Innings 20 video. Today we've got another video for you guys, today we've got a bunch of skill change tickets to use. We've got a GI reset ticket from Club, we've got a whole bunch of packs to go through. Now I will say this, I apologize, I don't have that many packs to go through today. We'll do a ranked reset too to make up for the fact that I don't have too many packs to do. But first things first, let's do our daily pack for the day, let's get our daily dose of disappointment in our veins. Now, last week I asked you guys a trivia question. I was curious how many people actually knew it because I didn't know it myself and I was actually genuinely curious. But I was wondering who had the earliest no-hitter among active pitchers today, as in who had it the earliest date. So the answer was Anibal Sanchez from the Washington Nationals. And I didn't realize this. Like, I totally forgot that he was on the – I totally forgot he was on the Marlins. Like, it completely blew my mind because – I only really know Anibal Sanchez from his time with the uh, the Tigers because I knew the trivia that he was one of the only members of like the Tigers that hadn't won a World Series ring yet until last year. So that's why I was like, oh yeah, I knew he was on the Tigers, but I didn't know he knew he threw a no hitter on the Marlins as a rookie in 06. My initial reaction to being asked the question by my buddy was, oh, it's got to be Justin Verlander. He had two one in 07, one in 12. But that is actually not the case. There's actually one earlier. Also, Clay Buckholz. I don't. I don't know if he was actually earlier than um, than Verlander or not. I don't know that actually. So, let's do our thing for the day, boys. I actually did get a vintage out of a daily pack. It was a silver. Nothing really to write home about. I mean, we'll we'll use him today. But I mean, it's not really anything crazy. I apologize again if I'm missing comments. Like, I want to answer all you guys, but just, like, this has been such a... Wow, that was a good start. It's been such a crazy week for me with school, with everything going on recently with the the virus, and there's a diamond out of that. I wish I could get diamonds out of my ultimates. Oh, and a prime, too! Let's go! Come on, baby. This is it. Come on. It's, it's... No, I don't need another Ensberg! It's off to a good start already. I just... Ah, just give me... Give me Posada, man. Come on. Sell my soul or something. Like, jeez, dude. We're going to keep attacking the bottom middle now. So that's what we're ready for. Ah, two more premiums. And that, that also kind of bums me out because I subscribe to the fact that I'm convinced that primes operate on a global variable. Kind of like you can't pull too many too quickly. You know what I mean? Sometimes it, it will try to give you like, it's kind of like premium packs. So you know how premium packs have a 1% chance of diamonds, but then as you go longer without a diamond, it will actually give you a better chance of pulling a diamond. I feel like it's that, but the, but the primes too. As you go longer without pulling a prime, I'm convinced that you'll actually get better chances to pull a prime. But I mean, that's, that's just my theory. It could be completely wrong, but so I'm convinced that once I pull a prime, I'm not going to pull another one, essentially, for a while at least. Like, at least a couple packs. So it uh, doesn't bode well for us pulling a prime out of the team selects, but yeah, we'll give it a shot. That being said, I can't seem to find a shuffle out of these silvers. So the Yankees actually clinched a playoff spot yesterday with the Marlins' loss to the Padres in extras. Also, the Padres pulled a playoff spot, too. So that is actually really fantastic. We're finally getting down to the final weeks here where we're actually going to be getting some playoff seating. And honestly, the playoffs feel really hollow to me this year. Like, they feel like they actually have no point. I really feel like that... I complained about this in a video with a podcast that me and my buddy did. I do some baseball podcasts with him sometimes where I just come on and yell about the Yankees and whatnot because, you know, I'm a fan and all that stuff. But we... We're talking about it, and I was talking about how that the, our commissioner wants to do this nonsense where he wants to have it so that way we're neutral sites every year for the playoffs, and I think that is a really stupid idea. I feel like this, I'm pulling the wrong spot, but I pulled the diamond anyway. I got the good Chris Bryant. That's pretty legit. Um, he wants to do this neutral side playoffs every year, which I think is extremely dumb. Yo, give me that Crush Davis. I don't even care. I don't even care. Just give it to me. Craig Kimbrell. Woo! Terrible. <laughs> he wants to do these neutral playoff sides every year, and I think it's the dumbest thing ever because home field advantage matters a lot in the playoffs. It really does. Yankee Stadium is actually a very tough place to come into and play in in the playoffs. Ergo, why we have such a good playoff record at home. It's, it's tough. The fans make it difficult and all a bunch of other stuff. 
But he wants to do his neutral sites. So not only will I not be able to go, for instance, see a World Series game at Yankee Stadium unless it's picked as a neutral site, but honestly, I won't be able to go see the DS and CS games there either. Like, I love going to playoff games. Not to mention the fact that if you're a season ticket holder and you actually have an opportunity to buy playoff tickets, now you can't do that anymore. I think it makes no sense for the casual fan or the hardcore fan to have these neutral site playoffs. We're not the NFL. It's not like that. Home field advantage actually genuinely matters in the playoffs. You need your home fans behind you. It's a genuine benefit when you have a ballpark that benefits your team and you set your team up to play in that ballpark and then all of a sudden the playoffs come around and you don't get to play in that ballpark anymore. It's incredibly stupid. And everybody can be like, oh, it's Yankee Stadium, short porch, and all that stuff. Yeah, that's fine. But you have to remember the fact that just because that short porch exists, you have to pitch completely differently in Yankee Stadium. Odds are you're probably pitching a lefty in Yankee Stadium because you don't want a left-handed batter up at the plate to try to hit the ball over the wall. You want to pitch your lefties in Yankee Stadium. And if your team doesn't have a good lefty, well, you're dead then. That's that's what happens. That's why it's a tough place to play in. And Fenway's the other thing, too, is you basically need to keep them away from the monster. Basically got to hope that they don't hit a line drive to left field or else it's an easy double. In Houston, it's the same thing, too. There's, the, there's kind of the short porch Crawford boxes in the left. It's kind of the same thing. You know, you have to pitch differently in those ballparks. And now with these stupid new rules that he wants to come up with where we're going to have 16 teams in the playoff every year, completely ruin the entirety of having winning your division meaning something where everyone gets in and basically has to play a three-game garbage fest anyway. It's incredibly stupid. Do you, If you asked my opinion, I would say take the playoff format, keep it the way it used to be. Maybe if you want to change the game, how about change the drop third strike? How about that? I'll give you that. But maybe add two new teams in expansion. Make it 32 teams so that way 16 makes sense and there's a buy in the first round. But as it's constructed right now, having the fact that you win your division mean absolutely nothing and you still have to play a three-game series is incredibly dumb. Because right now, if you're a good team, let's say it's going to be the Yankees. Who are we playing? Let's say we play the Twins in the first round. The Twins are going to have to play Garrett Cole in the first round. In Yankee Stadium, potentially. And if you lose that game, congratulations. You're not playing two elimination games in Yankee Stadium. I don't think any Twins fan wants to play that right now. I don't think anybody would want to face that right now. You're, you're facing the prospect of facing an, like an ace, and then after that, you're facing two one-game playoffs. Like, if you play the Indians right now, you're dead. The Indians are a seven seed. If you have... Um, What's his name? Uh, is it Plezak who's going for the Cy Young Award right now? If you you're facing him right now, you're dead. You you're losing game one. Like that offense can't score very many runs, but if that score if that offense manages to score one or two runs, you're losing that first game, and now you're playing two elimination games. And baseball is an awful sport in terms of making sure that the best team wins. It is fantastically horrible at doing it. So, for instance. Like, you can have a better team, and you'll, like I said, you'll lose to Plezak in the first game. And then next thing you know is, you can just happen to hit into bad luck in the second game, and congratulations, the second seed is now out of the playoffs. Who right now would be, who is the second seed in the AL right now? It would probably be the Rays, is it the Athletics in the second spot? I don't know who's the second spot right now. I can't think of it. Who's in the Who's in the central? It's got to be the. It's not the Indians. Who's Who's the top spot in the central right now? <laughs> I'm, I'm completely drawing a blank right now. Uh, it's, I think it's the White Sox. Would the White Sox be the two seed? I think the White Sox. So imagine the White Sox, and let's say Lucas G. Little gives you a bad game, and you end up playing Plezak in the first round, and you lose to Plezak in the first round, and now you're playing two elimination games with some people who I. You do you trust Dallas Keuchel? I mean, I don't, I don't know. You know, that's kind of that's a very scary matchup for me. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to bank my future on that. To tell, to tell us that you have an epic season like the White Sox have had. Oh, give me that Edmonds, yo. Give me that Diamond Prime, dude. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> I would have got him anyway. But I mean, what, what I'm saying is, is that I think that what he's trying to do right now, pushing this like this narrative of you know neutral ballparks and we got to have all this stuff, like you know, it's I, I don't agree with it. And you know, I've been a fan forever. It's not like it's gonna make me not be a fan, but I think that I strongly disagree with what he's trying to do here. I mean, maybe you guys agree with me or you don't. Maybe you guys think it's a great idea to have neutral ballparks, but to me, it just 
that rubs me the wrong way, and also the fact the playoff format also rubs me the wrong way. I mean, yeah, it's, it's good for the trade deadline when you have a lot of teams are suddenly in it at the end. That's great and all that stuff. But right now, it's just like you're not giving the teams that win the division any kind of benefit. It really is stupid to me. But anyway, that's all I'm going to rant about. I, I just wanted to ask what you guys thought about it. I mean, I've been looking at it from the inside, from the outside looking in, and I don't agree with it. And that's just what the way I feel, and maybe you guys feel differently. I really don't know. I just saw that card. I just pulled Justin Verlander. I remember just had uh, Tommy John. It's a real shame. Look, I, I'm I'm a jerk. Okay, I get that. I'm a Yankee fan, but I mean, even I appreciate watching great pitchers pitch, and he's a great pitcher. And um, it's a real shame. Like he's a really cool, really cool pitcher to watch because you know he's going to attack the zone and he's going to blow people away with a high fastball. It's fun to watch, but. It's a real shame, man. I, I don't know what we're going to do. It's it's a shame that we're going to lose him because I actually really appreciate watching people like that pitch. Ever since he was with the Tigers, I watched him pitch, and dude's, dude's a monster. I don't know if he's going to come back and hit free agency because this Tommy John is probably going to keep him out till 2022, which is his free agent year. I'm curious whether or not he feels like he's going to be able to come back and actually do it because he's so close to 3,000 strikeouts. Like I, he's at, like he, he needed only about one more season to do it. So that's why I'm um, like, man, he, he had a, such a good potential to actually hit it. You know, he was probably the next guy to do it. He's an easy first battle Hall of Famer, hands down. Yo, give me the Wainwright. How many primes are we going to miss today? Give me this Wainwright. Oh, it's a diamond. <laughs> I'll take that. It was three di- we missed three primes in shuffles today. Like, man, this is this is trash. <laughs> Got to adjust the, the setup here, boys. Not going ideal. Oh, that, that Gary Sanchez 19 card is so legit. He went to my spot. Damn it. Oh, well. I mean, it's going to be weird to see a Houston team in the playoffs without him this year. I think Houston's probably going to come in as an 8 seed if they make the playoffs. Um, so they'll probably be playing either the Rays or the White Sox in the first round, depending on how the Rays finish the season out. We'll see. I think the White Sox have a pretty tough schedule coming up. So the Rays have a much easier schedule. I definitely see them winning a bunch of games. Like we're basically hoping that we can, you know, take back a playoff spot from them at this point. So we're kind of sitting around hoping that, you know, some teams can win against them while we keep winning against the Blue Jays and Marlins potentially, but it is a pipe dream. It is absolutely a pipe dream. So what am I going to do here? Uh, I'll save those for the next ultimates. How are you guys teams doing? I'm curious to know if you guys have any any hopes for your teams with the playoffs coming up. I mean, I'm hoping that we can get into a run here. Our team looks like we're playing pretty hot right now. Obviously, we just got shut down by uh, by Hauk from the Red Sox. That's okay. Hey, another prime. No prime. Another vintage. Those are the words. Only one diamond out of nine alts. I have really bad luck with these alt diamonds. I don't know. I've seen people pull like five or six and ten, and I'm over here getting like one every day, man. Oh, it's brutal, dude. Absolutely brutal. Ooh, only got messed up a gold. Who is that? Who is this man? I didn't pull that many diamonds today, but we had some good chances for those primes, though, so that's a real shame that we didn't get any of them. No Posada yet, either. Didn't find him in the shuffle. But that is okay. Let's see. Do I have enough to do... What kind of combos am I going to do here? If we do some four gold, one diamonds. Yeah, we got some four gold, one diamonds. Mm, that Granky is an interesting one. I like that Granky. Nice. That's a good card. Now it's time to combine him right away. Here we go. This bottom mill has been pretty legit for me. I used to meme about it a lot, all the time. Oh, he went to my spot. No. You fool. No one really interesting that really, you know, tickles my fancy here. Just give me the diamond. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we'll do four diamond. Mm, pulling a couple Kimbrells today, I'm going to say. That's interesting. Jave uh, Jake McGee. I keep, <laughs> I keep wanting to call him JaVel McGee, <laughs> like the NBA player. <laughs> no, it's Jake McGee, you fool. <laughs> I'm really bad at these players, man. Sometimes, like, you guys have called me out in the past whenever I pronounce people's names wrong, and I'm just like, ah, I'm so stupid. 
Uh, I got a silver out of the out of the, uh, the intermediates. That's pretty good. I got one from the event, and I got one from the dailies. That's pretty legit. Ah, two silvers. Where did I get the other premium vintage from? I'm actually con confused. I don't know where I got that from. I don't actually because I got one from the club store. Where is the other one from? Maybe it was a maybe it was an event reward. I really don't know. I already have the Rudy May already leveled up, so I don't, I don't need any of those normals. All right, let's combine these dudes. I don't even know why I'm combining the normals anymore. I don't know what I'm going for here at this point, but I mean, it's just really to get rid of them. Julius Chachin. Interesting card. All right, so we got a couple vintage combos. Hey, look, Justin Verlander again. There he is. He's come back. Okay, so let's see what I'm doing here. That was all my intermediates, right? Yep. All right, let us go and unlock some of our previous vintage cards. Yeah, that Padres card was the one I actually got from the Daily Pack. I got Finley here. I was going to call him Scott Finley, and then I realized maybe I should take a look at him first, and as it turns out, that was a good idea because I would have looked like a fool again. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Let's do our silvers first. Come on, baby. Give me give me that legend. Oh, Johnny Bench should be a legend, truthfully. If you asked me, I think that Johnny Bench should absolutely be a legend. Although, what do I know? Hey, I got a diamond out of it. Nice. Cool. How many diamond vintages do I have? Is that two now? I like how that just comes up late. It just pops up late, as in not to spoil the surprise. <laughs> so I've got Hoyt. Vigna. You know what we'll do? Uh, we'll, we'll do this. We have a couple uh, GIs we're going to use. Let's use one GI and let's do one more combo because I've been holding on to these things. These minor grade increase tickets forever, man. And I've just got these like bronze. I've got these bronze. Uh, whatchamacallit? It's, I saved a couple bronze um, vintages, didn't I? No, I didn't. I got rid of them. What? Where'd they go? Hello? <laughs> What? Ah, uh, did I really combo them away? Uh, I'm such a fool. What a fool. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> that's that's a shame. So we're looking for one more diamond vintage, and then we'll do another three diamond combo. I I kind of like doing these three diamond combos because it's kind of cool to see what I get. Let me just lock up. Lock up my last couple of vintages so that way I don't combo them away by accident. There we go. Okay, well, let's go do a... Let's do our Grand Increase Reset Ticket. We're going to do it on Rudy May because he has my only player who's currently under 70 as a starter. So hopefully he goes up. Nope, it went down. That's okay. I mean, it's not... He's my long reliever. Not really the end of the world. He needs a retrain. Although I'm definitely sure that we'll be retraining uh, Tino Martinez first because he's really bad. He's so bad. Where's my boy? My boy James Paxton. Up for another day. Touch goal to pitcher is actually not the worst skill set. But, I mean, if we're going to be sitting here trying to get him perfect, we might as well get him perfect. Might as well. A lot of ace. It really wants me to run ace. Winning streak, inning eater. Literally diametrically opposed skills. Oh my god, that was so good looking too. That was so good looking. I got mess three. No, give me boss right after. Bro, come on. <laughs> you can't be serious. <laughs> come on, man. They gave me. Maybe boss and then mess on back to back skill changes? Bro, what is this? This is this is this is a nightmare. This is silly. I'll be doing these uh we have six hundred and sixty-two basics packs. Oh my god. We gotta open them up at some point. I mean I'm just letting them build up over time. We got a couple minutes. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to do, but man, it is we're gonna be looking for skills on packs until the day I die. That's gonna be a rough day. It uh, doesn't look like I've got anything else to do right now. I think I'm just going to go and I'm going to go do some ranked reset real quick. So I'll show you guys basically how we do our reset. So essentially I'm here. 
I'm normal three. I somehow beat a guy five nothing. I wish I understood. I also that guy ran into my normal team at the end. So we're gonna do our refresh. Come over to my normal lineup here. Load. Oh nope, that's Gio Gonzalez. Nope, stop that. Load my league lineup. And off we go. We go run into the races. So essentially, yeah, I just play my. Now I just now I just play everybody pretty much. Most of the time I'll lose one or two in the beginning just for the simple fact that a lot of times the people I'll play are people who are star refreshing at the top of ranked. So uh, every once in a while I'll end up with like a, a D1 or a legend player up at the top at the bottom of my refresh list because it happens, but it's not really a big deal. We don't really care about losing. Honestly, we're here to lose as many games as possible, and I don't know how I didn't score on that guy. Hello? Thank you. Sometimes my lineup doesn't score on basic pitchers, and I really get concerned. They just grinded the double plays off basic pitchers and basic players, and I'm like, how did that happen? <laughs> it's so weird. People will hit home runs off of my boss mess reliever. Boss mess starters, and then I will ground into double plays against their normal pitchers, and I get really confused. Look at all those notifications. Good lordy. Just want to make sure I'm not running out of storage space on my phone because uh, it's getting to that point. Got to start deleting some of the stupid uh, screenshots I take every time I lose a close game and post it in Discord complaining about it. Oh, boy. So, essentially, if you guys haven't seen my tanking video, essentially what I do is I just do this until Friday and then put my normal lineup in and just continue to play a normal ranked games until I'm done, and then I just end up uh, D3 by the end of the week, and then uh, problem solved. Uh, a week or two ago, I actually pushed for D2, and then realized that that was a fruitless endeavor for me, because essentially, I got to about 120, that was about as close as I got to top 100, and then everybody I played was just like a monster player, it was like, everyone up there is 116, crazy pitchers, just make your life difficult, no fun, like difficult people to play against and then even if you win against them the odds are they're going to revenge you and beat you without because it doesn't use your gear in home games so the odds are they're just going to revenge you and beat you anyway so you end up making no progress once you get up there you really have to really start there and you know kind of hold your ground making a late push is just really tough and not really worth the time nor money that you need to used to make star refreshes so that's why i just sit here still tanking despite the fact that my team is done because i don't trust my pitchers still i'm still working on skills for them um they're still not that great i mean i still run with a tanaka touch mess which is really kind of shaky if you ask me so i don't trust my pitchers they're usually a free a free loss whenever gidry or tanaka plays at this point against like a real d2 team so uh, I'm just still doing it with my tank team because it gives me some good ranked coins and hopefully uh, one day and soon I will have enough boss mess in my lineup where I can actually feel confident to actually make D2 pushes in the beginning of the week. Just right now I'm not there yet. Ugh, base is loaded, one out, no no runs. Ugh. It's amazing sometimes how your team just fails to score runs off of people you think that if you got in the batter's box against, you could hit a home run off of. But yeah, it's, that's our day. Oh, actually, I, I wanted to show you guys one other thing. I wanted to show you guys the stupidity of our week we've had this week. I want to show you this club battle we've had. I already know what our club battle is this week. I want you guys to experience this for the first time. This is the second time we've pulled them this week. And that's why I'm I'm kind of furious. There it is. Pulled TBD for the second time this week. Good lord. So stupid. I'm telling you, man. We've pulled them twice this week already. So as you see, we started the week off normal. Oh, that's my home matches. We got Naughty Lights, TBD... Easy Team, Solo Shots, Sandlot. We've had some some decent matches this week. I mean, we ran over, like, Sandlot and Solo Shots. I mean, that was really not tough. But we actually didn't flag TBD because we got we just we just didn't have the manpower to do it. We just ran out of steam at the end there. Ugh, that's a shame, man. That's an absolute shame. 
I think I went three and two during my first game. It's it's easier to win against a team like them with like your gear and with drinks. It's it, it makes it so that way you can win against them because you don't actually use gear and drinks in home matches. So they're a little less scary when you think about it. But you know for a fact that there's still going to be a tough match for a lot of teams, and it's not fun, man. It's it's not fun. I want to go back to us being like uh, top twenty and pulling like easy teams. You know what I mean? That'd be great. Thanks. <laughs> so trust me guys even if you guys are down there and you're like you know top 50 you're saying like man these top teams get such easy matchups well no not this week man we've had a tough week it's been a tough week but we've been holding on strong you know what i mean we've been we've been fighting we've been getting there but it's tough man <laughs> We've had a rough go at it, but we're gonna make the best of it. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll get pretty close today, and you know we'll, we'll we'll deal with it tomorrow, and we'll see where we go. At this point, where we're at, uh, we'd be happy with taking a D two finish. Hopefully, we don't get another really trash matchup. There was one two week cycle where we got TBD three times in two weeks, including the last day. So I'm hoping that's not the case this week. That's really what we got to hold our breath for, but, man, that would be really unfortunate. Grand Salami. Thank you, Sanchez. Love you. Beating up on the uh, the second list is always fun because after the second list, it becomes a real thing. I probably won't do the whole list. I'll probably do a couple extra matches, and then we'll, we'll go about our merry way, and then i got to start rendering this out to upload it. I'm thinking back to what we've done today. Man, we missed those Diamond Prime. We missed the Diamond Prime. We missed a couple Gold Primes. We know Chris Davis. Man, that's that's unfortunate. I don't know what I would have done with the Diamond Prime, but it would have been cool to have it. That's a shame. The worst is when you play a team that's like this, where you play a Silver Pitcher, and you still have to bring in your Closer, which is a real shame. Like, it's actually happened a couple times. Where I end up playing a gold Kershaw and he plays way out of his league and I just cannot hit him. And I'm like, God, are you serious? I ain't using my closer against a gold Kershaw. Happens more often than you'd think. It is a problem. 27 nothing. Zach Davies 20. That dude's pitching out of his mind right now. I'll look for like a tough um, a tough match on my revenge or two and see if I can play them. Just to give you guys some context to what it looks like to play a real opponent. And then we'll uh, probably end the video for the day because it is getting pretty lengthy. I don't want to keep you guys here all day. I'm still working on fixing a, up a live stream. I'm still looking for like options of how I can stream my screen but also keep up chat on my screen at the same time. So I'm working on it right now. I'm still figuring it out. Working if I can do a face cam or not. Like I'm trying to do it through Streamlabs. It is a, a bit of a headache right now, so as soon as I can finish that up, well, then I'll probably, every once in a while, do a live stream, see if what I can do on YouTube. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out what I'm doing with it. Not sure yet. Still working on it, but I, the plans are there, and I want to look into it for sure. It also has to work out with my days off, because right now, the problem is, is Wednesday is usually one of my day offs, and then that's manual day for club battles, and I usually don't do my manual days until like 4 in the morning when I'm about to go to bed, so... That's why that doesn't really work out for me. Man, you know what I'll say about this? These matches take forever because you score so many runs, they take forever. I didn't score a single run against him in the first inning. I have many questions. Did he start? Wait, hold on. Did he start the game with Brandon Workman and what happened here? Brandon Workman started the game? Like What? When was the last time this guy changed his lineup? I feel like that's a card that's like gets docked 20 points for being in the wrong position. That's weird. Did I see that right? Oh no, Eddie Rodriguez started. Okay. All right, I got you. I didn't know what I didn't know what was going on. I hope he's doing better. I I'm still sitting here thinking about the fact that he got complications from covid has an enlarged heart and it was very life-threatening so i'm hoping that he pulls through and he comes back to the pitching mound next year like i never want to see a player actually get hurt or anything like i would never wish that on anybody it's just a shame to see somebody actually get taken out of the game and get taken away from their livelihood and something they love something they're very good at 
You know, it's absolutely a shame to see him have to sit through that and actually deal with those consequences. Something that was probably wasn't even his fault. You know, it's like the virus just chooses you. It's a real shame, man. Hopefully he's back being the number two next year behind Sale. Or whenever Sale comes back. It's actually really funny. I was talking to a Red Sox fan uh, during the game. The Yankees came back and won it in extras. And he was like, what has Chris Sale even done for this team? And I'm like, uh, won a Cy Young award? <laughs> Probably. And he's like, oh, yeah, he did win a Cy Young. You're right. Oh, 20 MF? That's usually a good fight. All right, 111. Let's see what we got here. 58, 58 rank train means that I have a chance. I think he's using armor. We'll see. Matt Harvey. Oh, he's got Tanaka. This is a free loss. Whenever I play with Tanaka, man, Tanaka has a really, really bad tendency to give up solo home runs all the time, like so. I can't tell what, what... He doesn't have a mess on it. He's clearly getting affected by charisma while, like, people are on base, so... It's not... Oh, wow, am I really gonna time? Not really gonna time. It's really, like, amazing. I can't... How... How un... Like, I can't depend on Tanaka to do anything. It's really bad. Like, it's... I, I had to drop him to fourth in club lineup because he loses so many games off of solo shots late in his starts. 96, 101, that's still not that tough of a matchup, I'm sorry. 46, King Perseus, I know King Perseus, he's uh, he's a legend. Did he just say that he doesn't spend money? Excuse me? Oh. We'll play Sephiron. I'll, I'll play uh, King Perseus too. It's He's tough, like he's got a really good team, obviously, because he always finishes top three. But we uh we, we took uh we took L one away from him this week. We had a TBD member actually take uh, L one, so that was real legit. Wow, that's awesome! I don't know how I didn't score against this guy. Wow, really? Are you serious? This guy doesn't have mess. I can't score against him. That's like the worst. All right, now my bullpen's in. I I don't know how I didn't absolutely wreck this guy. One run on nine hits is really bad. I feel like I absolutely should have done a little bit better against him. That's actually insanity. All right, let's play King Perseus too. Let's see what I got here. See, this is what I'm talking about. Whenever you end up playing like people in L1 and L3 at the beginning, sometimes they just star refresh to come get you. Tanaka again, dude. Play, play one of my real pitchers. No, it plays Tanaka. Like, give me like Gray or give me like Severino or something. Like, nah, bro. Probably going to lose this game against, like, a one solo shot or, or a ground out RBI. Nice. <laughs> no way! What? <laughs> this is absolutely no way. Take it down, King Perseus. You know what? I'll take him up. I'll take this. How about this? <laughs> take a screenshot of that and put that in in, in uh, general chat but anyway you guys that's probably gonna be it for me for today i'm gonna finish up the rest of this ranked reset off screen i like how i can't score against Sephron with his non-mess pitcher but i ruined perseus's setup man yeah sure seems legit chapman gets the win but anyway you guys i'm gonna hop out of here for today so i will see you guys soon and hopefully i can do better replying in the comments this week again i apologize i'm doing my best here but Sometimes it just doesn't work out for me. Like, I just don't have time between work and school. So I will see you guys next week. If you guys want to see more from me, all you got to do is leave a like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next Monday, and hopefully soon I'll have a live stream out. Peace, guys.